I want to talk now to Cameron Milner, who's a former Labor Party State Secretary in Queensland. He's been on Labor's National Executive. He's been Bill Shorten's Chief of Staff in the, in the past. He's worked on countless campaigns. So great to get his analysis of the Labor campaign. He joins me now from Brisbane. Good to talk to you, Cameron. You've been um, writing fantastic Likewise, Chris. Uh, analysis in the Australian newspaper. It's great to uh, get your insights. And I suppose, rather obviously, last week was a very bad week for Anthony Albanese. You said that they would have written the whole week off after three days and decided to regroup. Have you seen significant evidence of a regrouping and a different strategy this week? Oh, look, no, no doubt the first week was disastrous. Uh, I described it as a hellish week uh, in terms of the way in which Labor opened its campaign. And it came off the back of being a small target for so long. Uh, but what we've seen the last couple of days, I think, is a really renewed Anthony Albanese. Uh, he's passionate. You should have seen today's press conference. He was out there really going after the problems in the aged care sector. So we're seeing some real passion from Albert Anthony Albanese. Passion we didn't perhaps see last week when he was, you know, being controlled by the media pack and being told to be small target. We're seeing the real Albo now, and that's fantastic for the campaign. He didn't over-egg it a bit. He looked a bit shouty to me. You went to, from Mr Nice Guy, as you said last week, to shouty oh. Albo today. <laughs> No, look, I don't think he was shouty at all, and I, I totally disagree with that assessment. He is passionate, as he should be, about the crisis in the aged care sector. All right, now, there are other issues around, and uh, we've seen a lot more of the front benches. Christina Keneally, she was in COVID isolation for a while, but she could have been doing stuff from there and wasn't. Penny Wong we're seeing more of. Uh, Tony Burke today, Jim Chalmers. This, again, is a deliberate strategy, isn't it, to get more Labor front benches out there? And, and one of my columns had said that. I mean, Labor is blessed with one of the strongest front benches of any opposition. Like, this real talent. People have been in government, people who know what to do, and the brain's trust behind Anthony Albanese really has to shine. And I've loved seeing Jim Chalmers on the campaign trail. Cairns, Brisbane, elsewhere. He's a genuine talent, a star player, and, as I quite, quite happily sort of said, will be a great treasurer for Labor and, potentially, in the future, a great Labor Prime Minister. Yeah, Chalmers has got to cut through. He's pretty pithy... Uh, with and relaxed uh, in his delivery. Now, what about the challenge tonight, then? Having had such a disastrous debate last week, a disastrous, disastrous campaign last week, does Anthony Albanese need to invest in tonight's leaders' debate as a chance to change momentum, to, to, to arrest his slide, or is it just another event to get through? No, not at all. This leaders' debate is crucial. Uh, momentum has been lost from the Labor campaign. Uh, last week was pretty bad. Uh, many gaffes, policy mistakes, etc. Let's not hide it under a bushel there. Uh, it was problematic. Uh, Anthony his, himself has said that tonight's debate is crucial and it's a reset, in his own words, for how the campaign will go going forward. That said, um, I think the real pressure is, is on Scott Morrison like this. He's not going to be good in front of Anthony Albanese. Anthony Albanese is a, par is a parliamentary... Uh, excellent debater like this. And I think with the passion you saw in today's press conference, Anthony Albanese will wipe the floor in tonight's leaders' debate. Yeah, we'll see. The last thing he can afford to do is uh, make another mistake, get something wrong. Do you think from what we saw on the, uh, on the campaign trail today, that aggressive approach, that, that, that we will, that's a rehearsal for the debate? He's going to go hard at Scott Morrison tonight? It wasn't aggressive. It was passionate. And I love seeing it. I love seeing that real elbow passion. What about this point I make about scare campaigns? It's very hard to scare people about what a coalition government might do in the next term when they've just been in for three terms. You can see what they've done. Whereas, for instance, the scare campaign about borders, well, that's exactly what Labor did last time. So it's a much more plausible scare. Oh, look, I think, I think on borders, Labor's got to tighten its language up, and I'm trusting in Christina Keneally to do that. She did a really good press conference today. Uh, Anthony's cleaned his language up from last week as well. Uh, so Labor will be strong on borders, strong on, on Operation Sovereign Borders uh, going forward. Uh, but to scare campaigns, um, I was the Chief of Staff when we ran the first Medi scare campaign back in 2016. Uh, it took a lot to get that up like this, uh, but it was heavily effective in terms of reminding people of what Labor stands for and what the coalition threat is to something like Medicare. There you go. Six years on, they're still using uh, your misleading scare campaign. Cameron, I just want to get one other thought. It wasn't uh, misleading. Thanks, Chris. Well, well Medicare's still there, in fact, and bulk billing rates have gone up and you can now get it for telehealth and yada, yada, yada. But just a final thought from you on news poll. I mentioned the point before that the leadership rankings and preferred Prime Minister are often seen as a lead indicator. That is, that Labor won't have gotten too much solace from what happened with the primary vote this time 
because what's happening on the personal vote, the preferred Prime Minister might actually show that the, that the, the uh, voter, voting preferences, voting uh, um, preferential, um, the preferred leaders, the, the voting intentions is what I'm trying to say, will follow in coming weeks. Yeah. Look, I think that's right. And I think the other thing, there was a news poll uh, yesterday, today's was essential in The Guardian. And Catherine Murphy, who's a well-known supporter of Anthony Albanese, opened the line saying that Labor slipped backwards and lost ground. Uh, so I think the polls are pointing to a campaign which has obviously had a bad first week. But we're four weeks away from March, from, from May 21, like this. So I think there's every chance to restore that and get back and campaign hard and restore those numbers to where they were only three weeks ago for Labor. Well, Cameron, great to have you on. Love to have you on each week until Election Likewise. Day, if you want to agree. Good stuff. Very, very happy to, Chris. Thank you so much great for your time. Stuff.